Hello students, welcome back to class. I first want to assure you that any dreams you may have had of abyssal demons ripping you apart is purely just that, a dream, a common occurrence when dealing with the demons of the abyss. Now with that out of the way, let's continue with our next lesson on one of the creations of the wicked gods. I'm of course speaking of the orcs. Of all the mortal races on Mantica, orcs may be the most vile, for unlike most other races, who aren't inherently good or evil, orcs were crafted to delight in violence and destruction, to tear apart all that is good and leave nothing but pain and anarchy in their wake, a perfect weapon against the forces of good, crafted by the most wicked of hands. During the height of the God War, the wicked god Garkin the Black, a god who relished in the creation of unnatural life, chose to craft the perfect warriors to march under the god's banner. And to craft this most evil of creatures, he had the perfect resource, the races of Mantica. All mortal races have a bit of darkness within them, a portion of their soul that breathes the worst aspects of their personality. And it is from these dark portions that Garkin would gather his materials. The pride of the elves, the stubbornness of the dwarves, the chaotic nature of humanity, as well as many other sins from many other races. For 900 days, Garkin crafted and molded this new creature, and at its end, from his flesh forges were birthed the first orcs. A creature taller than most humans, with broad and hunched shoulders and a heavily built muscled body, covered with a thick green hide as tough as leather and protruding from its face is a long jutting jaw below red eyes brimming with hate. Along with their size and strength, they have levels of endurance that many would think impossible, able to withstand blows that would kill most creatures and survive on little sustenance for days at a time. Endurance ideal for what was to be an unstoppable army. If Gargan's goal was to use these orcs to tip the battle in the wicked god's favor, he was unsuccessful. The wicked gods were eventually defeated, and the orcs were free of their master's lash. With their new independence, they spread like a plague, moving to the deep forests, mountains, and plains across the planet. And that's where their story should have ended, the species slowly dying off, due to the constant violence that was orc life. Unfortunately, that end was dodged, when the orcs somehow gained the ability to breed. How the orcs gain the ability to propagate, or even how they do so, is unknown. Orcs, as far as examinations of their corpses have shown, have no apparent gender and no discernible organs for reproduction. Current theories range from the creatures birthing new orcs from torn limbs to even the intervention of another wicked god. One possible clue is the orcling. Small creatures similar in body shape to orcs, although lacking in their size and strength, they constantly run around orc camps, performing menial tasks such as maintenance or the gathering of materials. Although if they are some form of orc child, it doesn't save them from being used by the orcs as some form of cannon fodder. The cultural center of orc society, if one can call it that, is the tribe. However, Orcs have no concept of loyalty or familial ties, so while other races would see the tribe as a place for togetherness or a common identity, orcs see it as a convenience. A large number of orcs gathering together simply a guarantee of a future assault on a town, city, or country. As such, fighting is constant in orc society, as orcs will fight to the death over the smallest slight, both real and imagined. In such a brutal society, might makes right. The strongest orcs lead, and must constantly fight against rivals to maintain their position. Fights that guarantee at least one death. Orcs may seem like savage barbarians with low intelligence, but they have an innate instinct when it comes to combat. Able to forge crude but effective weapons, and use tactics and strategies that can easily defeat a commander who underestimates them. For these creatures were built for war, 
and know how best to use their strengths to their advantage. The most common and numerous formation of the orcs is the Barky, also commonly called an axe. Generally composed of younger orcs wielding spiked shields and axes or heavy weapons, they aim to survive the meat grinder that is combat and become toughened axe warriors. More skillful and reckless orcs become part of a Morax unit. Experts in close combat charging into the battlefield wielding two axes with brutal efficiency. The toughest and strongest of the orcs wield great axes and form a unit called a Graka Mar Kashgak, or a great axe in the common tongue. Orcs are rather simple when it comes to naming. Either way, these powerful fighters are commonly found around orc leaders, the leaders using them as guards or shock troops. It's hard to find a creature willing to stay near an orc. Most have enough sense to flee in terror around these giant green brutes. But the gores are different. Heavily muscled beasts twice as heavy as an orc and somehow just as foul, they are considered one of the most temperamental beasts on Mantica, goring any creature in its territory, which is generally whatever is in its eyesight. As such, subduing and riding such a creature is seen as a point of pride amongst the orcs, a further test of their superiority and strength. Besides riding them into combat, orcs have been known to have them pull chariots, using these powerful, if crude, devices to poke bloody holes into an enemy's tight formations. They are also capable of pushing, yes, you heard me, pushing, fight wagons, a spiked platform upon which rise Morax gleefully slashing at any nearby enemies. A ridiculous concept to most, but the orcs somehow make it work. Most orcs prefer to fight head to head, charging into the enemy's front lines to prove their superiority. However, there are a few who prefer to use things like bows, or even sneak up to an enemy. Although seen as cowardly by many in the orc rank and file, these skulks, as they are called, are often used by orc leaders who can see the value of their unorcish behavior. Led by their stalker and marauder masters, their bows and stealth tactics bring a valuable, if unappreciated, benefit to the orc army. In a society that values strength so highly, it might be strange to see a being such as a god speaker amongst their number. A skinny orc barely capable of holding an axe, these creatures are still given a wide berth by other orcs, because, as the name suggests, they speak for the gods. At least, that's what the orcs believe. These orcs are different from birth, with behavior many consider the touch of the gods such as their eyes glowing green or simply just talking to themselves. Kept content, even if they are isolated from other orcs, with offerings of food by orc leaders, their real power comes during battle, their strange chanting and wild dances apparently blessing the orcs and cursing the enemy. There are other races who choose to march under the orc banner, for example trolls, large humanoid creatures with powerful regenerative abilities and a voracious appetite are often used by orc armies. Led by larger trolls called bruisers, the powerful, if dim-witted, creatures make short work of most. Somewhat rarer but also part of the orc horde are the giants. With brains too small to properly control such a large body, these living siege towers follow orc hordes for promises of violence and food to consume. The leader of the orc army is the Crudger a being who has proven through strength of arm and the body of its rivals that only it is worthy of leadership. Armed with the strongest weapons and armor, it commonly leads on foot. It can also be seen riding on gores, or even powerful reptile slashers. They tend to be followed by a retinue of orc elites who follow the crudger into battle, crushers who act as bodyguards so that lesser enemies don't get in the crudger's way. Banner bearers who proudly display the Crudger's banner for all to see while also using it as a club, and war drums to cause fear in the enemy and give encouragement to nearby orcs. Since their creation, orcs have been a constant thorn in the sight of all the races of Mantica. They swell in size, fight against whoever is nearby, and break apart when leadership is eventually cut down, a cycle that has repeated for centuries. However, 
It has been noted in recent times that orc numbers have grown far more than normal, and fights have increased in places where orc populations were seen as under control. That, combined with visions and portents of doom from various seers, may be an indication that a future orc warlord may soon unite all of the orc tribes and bring about the destruction of all the races of Mantica. Well, I hope I didn't scare you all, students. I assure you, if the orcs do come, your death will be quick. Brutal, but quick. Come back soon, and I will speak of a more pleasant topic. I will speak of the undead. Hey guys, I hope you're staying healthy in these, I guess, pivotal times in history, or however you want to say it. And I hope you enjoyed this video on the orcs of Kings of War. If you like it, as you know, please like, subscribe, comment, press the little bell so that other people might discover my work. And if they like it, also become subscribers. If you really like it and you're inclined, and I know things are tough economically for a lot of people, but if you have the cash and you have the time, please consider sending a little money my way through my Patreon or through my Ko-fi account. The extra money gives you the time I need to work on these stories that I love. Anyway, thanks for listening, slash watching, slash etc. Soon I'll come up with a new video and uh, talk to you next time.